up people, thanks as always for passing by the channel, much appreciated. Alright, before we get started with this video, yesterday I did a video talking about um, Canelo, whether he's a top 5 pound for pound and, admittedly I fucked up, I missed that Mikey Garcia. Um, I knew it, I was, as you, if you guys have watched the video, I was saying to myself, is there someone that I've missed out? And I was thinking, there must be. And um, shout out to a few of the, the followers that said, look, Mikey Garcia, duh. So I missed that Mikey Garcia, so I'm going to have to redo that. And rather than redo it, I'm just going to do my top 10. My top 10, which, look, I guess it's subjective, right? We've all got our own versions of who should be in the top 10. I think most of us, I'd say 80% of us, will have the same six or seven names, and then maybe three or four names will be completely different. Um, I still don't actually know what pound for pound means. Before, I used to think it was if this guy was the same way. So if everyone was exactly the same way, based on their style, their technique, whatever, who would be the man? But I think we've moved away from that now because now people talk about records, resumes, blah, blah, blah. So I don't actually know what pound for pound means. So feel free to enlighten me on what pound for pound means before I even do the video, which I'll probably do later on this evening, if not tomorrow morning. All right, so the Lofkin. What did I say? I said retire, rematch, 168 pounds. Um, let's talk about retirement first. And look... And I know some people might not be happy with the idea of Glovkin retiring, like he's got a lot left in the, in the tank, um, he's only lost once, and that was disputed. But retirement's always an option. Retirement's always an option. I think Andre Ward retired and that surprised people. Even, go back a few years, when Carl Frotch retired, that shocked a few people. You can retire. There's nothing wrong with that. He's clocked the game, right? If boxing was a game, he's clocked it. He's won numerous world titles, um, both as an amateur and a pro. Um, he's made millions now because of these two um, Canelo fights, so what's left to achieve? What's left to achieve? I look at Golovkin and I was watching that fight closely and I was looking at an old man. An old man in the ring and not necessarily due to age, but just used to wear and tear on the body. Like just to wear and tear on the body. Um, he's only had, what's he had? 30? How many? Pro fighters as Golovkin had, 34, 35. But you combine that with how many amateur fights he's had, and we're talking well over 400 fights. And it isn't just the fight, people. You've got to go in, if you've not been to a boxing gym to watch some of these kids spar, please do. Most boxing gyms allow you to just walk in, um, unless there's a big title fight. You can watch guys go at it. It's the sparring. It's the making weight. He has to come down. I'm, I'm guessing Golovkin's about... 190s, he has to come down by 30 pounds. You try and lose a couple of pounds. Try and go to the gym and lose a couple of pounds and see how hard it is. He has to make weight every single fight. All the sparring, all the strength and condition, it takes a toll on your body. And I felt watching him on Saturday, it just looked like everything hit him at one go. And look, it was still a fantastic performance. I think he won the fight by a round, but it wasn't the Golovkin of four or five years ago. And that's the thing for me. I want to see that Golovkin. Golovkin wants to see that Golovkin, but that Golovkin ain't there no more. So retirement for me is definitely an option. It's definitely an option. He's okay, he's successful. When you start off your career as a boxer, uh, you know, I'm guessing you want to win small titles. Um, eventually, if you're good enough, world titles, and only a few are good enough. And then with the world titles, you want to make millions. He's done all that. So there isn't much more to achieve. So retirement is definitely sort of an option. And I think it's an option that he will probably think about. Trust me, he will probably think about it. Rematch. I am split on this. I am so split on whether I want to see him have a rematch. On the one hand, I think he deserves a rematch. Why don't you deserve a rematch? He's held this middleweight throne for at least five or six years now. He's been dominating the middleweight division. Maybe not a good division, but he's been dominating what's been there. He's only lost to Canelo, and that was disputed. The first one, he won. So he could have had two wins on his record against his nemesis. He deserves the chance to get his belts back, surely. No? Surely he deserves a chance to get his belts back. But, more than a Golovkin fan, I'm a boxing fan. And from a boxing fan standpoint, I want to see the division move on. There's a lot of hungry young kids in the wings waiting for their opportunities. I want to see Billy Joe Saunders get an opportunity against Canelo. I want to see um, the Charlo brothers who talk a hell of a lot of smack, I want to see them get an opportunity. If Boo Boo beats Billy Joe Saunders, I want to see him get an opportunity. If there was no one in the queue, like there wasn't three or four years ago, then I'd say, you know what, give him a rematch, he deserves it in May. Because there are five or six guys in the queue now, maybe even more, if you chuck in David Lemieux now, I think um, we need to see the division move on. So unfortunately, 
as much as I think he deserves a rematch, I think for boxing, he shouldn't get a rematch. And that's difficult for me to say because I'm a massive Golovkin fan, but for boxing, he shouldn't get a rematch. Look, rematches are dictated by one thing and one thing only, the fans. Once the fans scream and shout for a rematch, boxing normally gives it to us. Look, even if you go back a few years when Carl Froch beat George Groves, Carl Froch didn't want to give George Groves that rematch. No siree. The fans started screaming and shouting, Groves started screaming and shouting, and we got a rematch. It's the fans that dictate what happens. And going on sort of Twitter and YouTube and even a bit of Instagram, I didn't see a lot of fans screaming for the rematch. I heard some fans scream rubbery and this and that. I didn't see people say rematch. And I think that's why he won't get a rematch. 168 pounds. This for me is the best option. This is the one. So if I was to do sort of one, two, three, um, it would be 168 pounds retire rematch. 168 pounds is the one for me. And I've been saying that. Golovkin should go to 168 for a, for a while now. This is when there wasn't many options. This is when there wasn't a Canelo option and some of the options that are there now. 168 for me, he has a chance to become a two-week world champion, which is big, right? When you retire and you look back and, oh, he's a two-week world champion, it, it's big. He has a chance to do that. And not only does he have a chance to do that, I look at the, the 168 division. I mean, it's not a killer division right now. It really isn't full of killers. And I think Golovkin, who clearly is struggling at the weight, I mean, you look at him, he does look gaunt at the weigh-ins. Even the press conferences, he just looks a bit gaunt for me. That extra eight pounds might add a bit more zip to his game. It's not going to speed him up a bit, but he's going to make him, I think, be a bit more powerful in the later rounds. And he will carry his power up. That's what Golovkin will do. 100% he'll carry that power up. Um, the guys at 168 are big. There's no two ways about it. They are big guys. Look at George Groves, look at Kenneth Smith. These are big guys right now. But I think he has a chance there. I think he has a chance, and I don't think... He'll have to get behind the queue to get a chance at a title shot. I think he could get a title shot straight away just because he is GGG. Um, I think that's the option. I think that's the option that makes sense. Um, financially, it probably doesn't make sense because there aren't that many big money fights at 168. But a chance to go out as a 2 weight world champion, um, I think, is realistic. And I think it's something that he needs to look at. It is. Right now, he's going to be screaming for that Canelo rematch. But unfortunately, he's not going to get it. Um, he's not going to want to retire after a loss. Even though in his, his mind he probably doesn't think it's a loss. So 168 is the best option. So that's it. Those are my three options. Um, again, 168, retirement, rematch. I, I don't think he's going to get the rematch. If he doesn't get the rematch, he's going to be thinking about retiring. And I think he should go 168. I think he should go one more. Have a go. You've been talking about going to 168 for years. They'll talk about it for Carl Froch. They'll talk about it for Andre Ward. They was even talking about it for James DeGale. Why not go now? Why not go now and try and become a two-weight world champion? But what do you guys think? What are his options? Uh, name some fights that you'd like to see him in. And what do you think of the three? Where would you kind of have him at in those uh, one, two, three options? Let me know.